it's not so common but you might have seen circular slabs maybe a roof of a circular hall or the floor slabs of a circular shaped water tank and all so we shall see how it is being designed circular slabs can be analyzed by considering it as a thin plate and the elastic theory of theory of thin plates can be applied it can also be done by finite element method and after the analysis we will be getting the critical values of bending moment and shear force and uh, and for those values we will be designing the slab and when subjected to external loading our circular slab will be deflecting in a saucer shape the deflected shape will be that of a saucer cup and saucer will be behaving essentially as a two way slab and will be bending in both directions so there will be radial as well as circumferential stresses so there will be cracks in those directions so in order to prevent that we have to give radial and circumferential reinforcement and you just look at this figure so this is having radial as well as circumferential reinforcement and if you observe towards the center there will be the reinforcement will be very much congested so practically this will be very difficult to establish so we have to avoid such a uh, congestion in towards the center and we have to go for a mesh type of arrangement which is shown here so this will be having reinforcement perpendicular in two mutual uh, mutually perpendicular directions uh, uh reinforcement has to be laid as a mesh so this is what explained here in order to prevent this radial and circumferential cracks you have to give such reinforcement in this direction it will be inconvenient near the center due to congestion and we have to give the mesh type of arrangement so towards the periphery towards a towards the periphery we can go for radial and circumferential reinforcement and towards the center we can go for the mesh type of reinforcement and now we have to see what are the moments and shear forces to be considered for the design so we can uh, examine the support conditions of a slab how it is whether simply supported or fixed or partial fixity is given to the end end of the slab edges end edges of the slab so based on this we can see what are the moments and shear forces and will be varying so we have to consider radial moment circumferential moment and radial shear force while we are designing the circular slab and if you observe these moments are varying with respect to the support conditions of the circular slab whether it is simply supported or fixed circular slab or partially fixed circular slab so let's consider this case simply supported if the uh, ends are assumed to be simply supported and let the capital r be the radius of the circular slab if you are considering a point p at a distance of small letter r from the center and if you consider section xx you can see this figure so in this figure point p is marked towards the left side so assume it is we are viewing is viewing this from above or from the other side okay so we will get this point on the left side so just simply uh, represented as a simply supported condition to show the simply supported condition and it is loaded with a udl of w okay so in this case what is a uh, what are the moments and shear force coming and also if we are giving some fixity on the edges what will be the difference and if it is partially fixed again the same notation is given but it is partially fixed support and what is the difference in all these radial moments or compressional moment and shear force okay so uh, this is the case for simply supported ends if you are observing you can see mr will be varying like this with the maximum value 3 by 16 wr square r is the radius of the circular slab and m theta will be varying like this at the ends it is having a value 2 by 16 wr square and at the center it is having a higher value and 
if the end conditions are fixed how the moments are varying mr and m theta it is varying like this so where do you get this nature of variation and also where do we get this value or how do we get the maximum values so we need to know the maximum values when we are designing the slab so how to get this maximum value that we can see so these are the general expressions based on the different end conditions whether it is simply supported or fixed or partially fixed so we can observe we can see uh, mr value m theta and v values so general expression you have to remember for all the all the three cases for all the types of moments and shear forces and afterwards we can uh, substitute uh, the value of small letter r whether it is at the center or at the supporting edge so this r value varies from 0 to capital r so we will observe both these cases and write the value of mr or similarly for m theta so we shall see simply supported circular slab what is the radial moment expression for radial moment mr is equal to 3 by 16 w into capital r square minus small r square and for fixed what is the expression and for partially fixed what is the expression for radial moment and similarly for circumferential uh, similarly the expressions for circumferential moment for the three cases simply supported fixed and partially fixed condition now you can uh, remember these six formulas by having some connection by linking all these equations like a variation 3 outside then 3 now 3 will go with r square and here 2 and 3 you have to uh, memorize all the six equations now we shall see <coughs> what is uh, the what are the values at center and at supporting edge so consider this case mr is equal to 3w by 16 into capital r square minus small r square at center the value of r is 0 so if you are substituting 0 here what is it, what will be the equation 3w by 16 into r square this term will vanish now at the supporting edge what is the value of small letter r r is the distance of that point from the center so it will be small letter r will be radius equal to the radius so you have to substitute small letter r is equal to capital r square so the value will be 3w by 16 into capital r square minus capital r square it will be zero now about fixed condition at center r is equal to zero if we substitute here r small letter r is equal to zero it will become w by 16 into r square or 1 by 16 into w r square and when capital r when small letter r is equal to capital r means at the supporting edge what is the value W by 16 into r square minus 3 r square will be negative minus 2 by 16 w r square. Negative moment will be in the other direction. The bending will be in the other direction. Then partially fixed condition. This is the general expression for radial moment. When r is equal to zero, that means the value at center will be 2 by 16 w r square, and the value at supporting edge will be support will be minus 1 by 16 w r square. When you substitute Uh, small letter r is equal to capital r in this general expression so similarly for circumferential moment you will get the values the maximum values maximum and also the minimum values so you can take it accordingly at center and supporting edge and if we consider the radial shear force acting at point p at any point p if we consider the value of v it is wr by 2 and at center when r is equal to 0 this value is 0 shear force is 0 at the center and at support small letter r is equal to capital r and v is equal to w capital r divided by 2 and it is the same for all the three cases wr by 2 wr by 2 it's a same so you have to memorize all the general equations and also the maximum values
we shall move on to a design problem. Design is simply supported circular slab carrying a superimposed load of 4 kN per meter square. The diameter of the circular slab is given as 5 meters and the details of concrete and steel to be used are also given the grades. So we shall see what are the steps in the design. So we have to first find out what is the load coming on the circular slab. So for that now we have only the diameter of the circular slab. This is what they demand. Diameter of the circular slab is 5 meter. It should be 5 meter. And design is to find out what are the dimensions and also what are the uh, uh, quantity of reinforcement to be given and also how it is being laid that is coming to the detailing part. So we have to assume a slab thickness and to start with. Then we will find out what is the load and based on that load what are the bending moments based on the support conditions given radial and circumferential. So here we have to use the general expression or the maximum values of the moments, bending moments. Then we will check for the effective depth. Effective depth, it is related to what? The slab thickness. Whether it is, uh, we will be checking whether or whether the slab thickness that we assumed or that we have assumed is uh, enough. Then we will find, if it is okay, we will be finding the area of steel required at the center and supporting edges. We will be checking for the shear. And finally, the detailing. We have to draw the reinforcement details. Now we shall move on to our first step. This load calculation and is done per meter width. So what is the radius? 5 by 2, 2.5 meter or 2500 mm. So we can assume the slab thickness almost as radius by 20. So the value will be 120, almost 120 mm. You can round it off. It is slightly greater than 120. You can take 120 or 130. Then what will be the load? Dead load and superimposed load. So dead load, you have to take the thickness. 0.12 is the thickness of the slab in meters into 1 meter strip. Into 1 into density of concrete can be as assumed as 25 kN per meter cube that you will be getting in 3 kN per meter that is per meter that is for 1 meter width so this 3 kN per meter simply you will be getting a, uh, a similar figure as that of a beam simply supported beam if you are observing from one side uh, you can load it with uh, you can load it with W and that value is 3 kN per meter like that then superimposed load is given it is given in 4 unit is kilo newton per meter square and the value is 4. So for 1 meter strip you can multiply it with 1 you will be getting the value in kilo newton per meter 4 kilo newton per meter. So the total factored load is 1.5 into that sum of dead load and superimposed load. So you will be getting the value as 10.5 kilo newton per meter and this is W clear. Then our next step is to find out the bending moments. So bending moments, now in this question it is simply supported, boundary conditions are simply supported. So we have to consider the maximum values coming in a simply supported case. So for simply supported slab, if you observe the radial moment, radial bending moment, the maximum value is at the center, you can cross check it with the table given before. At the center, MR is equal to 3 by 16 WR square and at the supporting edge, MR is equal to 0. So, the two extreme values are uh, written here and we'll, we can see that the maximum value is 12.3 kN meters. That is 3 by 16 into W value is 10.5 and R square is 2.5 square. So, you got a value as 12.3 kN meter. Then at the supporting edge, MR value, the formula is 0. And what about the circumferential bending moment? We are considering the maximum values. We have to consider the maximum values. At the center, M theta is equal to 3 by 16 WR square. Uh, and uh, it is 12.3 kN meter if you substitute. And it's the same. And supporting edge M theta, the equation is 2 by 16 WR square. And the value is this. So we have to design, we have to find the bending moment and we have to give the reinforcement at center and supporting edge. 
considering this center and supporting edge. Now the next step is check for effective depth. So we have assumed a uh, thickness of 120 mm and now if we uh, detect the uh, effective cover we have to uh, see whether the effective depth D value is enough or not. So this is based on what this depth, depth should be enough to take the bending moment. So you have to take the MU value greater of all moments that means it is greater value is 12.3 kN meter. Now we can uh, see what is the limiting value maximum value acceptable value of moment it is based on the grade of steel it is 0.138 fck bd square so this 0.138 value will be varying for different grades of steel steel for fe 415 it is 0.138 fck bd square so we have to see what is the uh, what is the minimum d required in order to take this moment this is the maximum moment coming in our case considering all the four moments so uh, in order to take this moment what is the d required so we are equating both 0 0.138 fck bd square is equal to this in order to convert it into newton millimeters you have to multiply with n raised to 6 so if you solve this you will get d as somewhat around 67 mm so this is the d required effective depth required in order to safely take this moment so what is uh, we have to see what is the D provided now. So total slab thickness provided is 120 mm and this is the assumed value. So we are assuming an effective core of 30 mm. So D provided is 90, 120 minus 30 which is equal to 90. So what is the D required? It is only 67 or 70. So we are safe. The value provided is greater. So we are safe. So hence, okay with the total thickness of 120 mm. Now we have seen what are the uh, maximum value of moments coming radial and circumferential and also whether the D assumed thickness is enough to take the moment. Now we shall uh, find out what is the total area of steel required. So we shall do it as two parts as at center what is the area of steel required and at the supporting edge what is the area of steel required. So at the center what is the radial moment and the circumferential moment at the center both the values are same it is 12.3 into 10 raised to 6 newton millimeters and now we will be finding the AST based on our equation in annex G IS 456 page number 96 so you have already used this equation uh, for MU and if we equate it we can find out the AST value AST required so MU is equal to at the center what is the maximum uh, value of both moments you have to observe and take the higher value here in this case both the values are same and it is 12.3 kN meter so you have to equate it and find AST required so equating to find AST required 12.3 10 raised to 6 is equal to 0.87 FY is 415 and AST is unknown what is the D value it is 90 120 minus effective cover 30 that is 90 mm into into 1 minus ast is unknown f5415 b we are uh, taking it for uh, 1 meter strip so we can put as b as 1000 mm and d again is 90 fck is 20 m20 concrete so equate it you'll be getting a quadratic equation and is equal to zero form and if you solve it you'll get ast required it is around 420 mm square you have to cross check it with the minimum AST required it is 0.12 percentage of total cross sectional area for FE 415 steel so 0.12 by 100 into B into D so this D should be what the total uh, depth and that is 120 not the effective depth of the cross sectional area you have to kind of take the 0.12 percentage so B is 1000 and capital D is 120 you will get the value as 144 millimeter square so what is the AST required it is 420 and minimum AST required is 144 so we can give this AST if in some cases the AST required maybe if it is coming as 90 mm square so the minimum AST to be given is 144 so if you are going with this 90 for the value here you got it as 
9g you cannot go with this so you have to go with the ASG minimum so in this case ASG minimum is 144 and the required value is 420 which is greater than ASG minimum so it is okay so hence ASG required is chosen to be given then providing we have to find uh, we have to assume a diameter bar diameter we are assuming it as 10 mm and now we have to find the spacing because in slabs you will usually find the spacing of bars not the number of bars then we found the spacing as uh, area 1 bar into 1000 we are distributing it for 1 meter strip so the, we are giving it as 1000 if you are going for any particular uh, uh, any other width you have to write that value here pi by 4 into area 1 bar into 1000 divided by AST to be given is 420. You got the value as 186 so we are taking a lesser value for spacing. We are choosing 180 mm uh, spacing. So provide 10 mm dia bars at 180 mm center to center in both directions in the form of mesh. So we are finding the AST at the as you required at the center. So at the center, if you are going for radial and circumferential arrangement, it will be causing congestion. So we we have to give it as a mesh. So provide 10 mm dia bars in the form of mesh in the middle portion of slab as both radial and circumferential moment is 12.3. So we are taking the we have taken the higher value, so it is safe. Now at the supporting edge, we are going to the supporting edge. MR is equal to 0 and M theta. If you observe, M theta is equal to 8.203 kN meter. So, this is the circumferential moment at the supporting edge. So, which is a higher value at the supporting edge? It is 8.203. So, we are choosing it, MU. So, the same, similar step here. Okay. Instead of 12.3, here the value is 8.203 kN meter. So, we are substituting in the same equation and finding the ASG required. So here the ASG required is 270 mm square. So what is the difference here? Here we are considered, we have considered at what are the radial and circumferential moments at the center. So here in this case both the values are same. So we are taking it as MU, you are substituting in this equation and finding ASG. And here we have got MR the value is 0 at the supporting edge and m theta the value is 8.203 so we are taking mu as 8.203 and substituting in the same equation uh, and finding the s required to take this 8.203 moment uh, s required is 270 mm square now this is to be given at the supporting edge and this moment is a circumferential moment radial moment is 0 circumferential moment is 8.203 so we have to design we have to design this AST in order to take the circumferential moment so in order to take the circumferential moment this reinforcement should be placed in the form of rings so as rings they have to be placed to take the circumferential moment so we have to see how much number of bars should be given number of bars required is AST required AST divided by pi by 4 into 10 square that is almost 4 bars should be given in the form of rings and uh, again it is about uh, the moment at the supporting edge so it need not be given throughout so we have to see uh, up to what width it should be given so the rings should be provided in a width equal to 1 by 6 of the radius of slab so slab radius is 2.5 2.5 by 6 that means 420 mm within a distance of 420 mm from the support these bars should be distributed so it is we have to find out what is the spacing so if you are to give four bars there will be three gaps so almost uh, how much is the spacing 420 divided by 3 that is equal to 140 mm so provide four numbers of 10 mm dia bars circular rings at 140 mm center to center spacing near the edges so this will be very clear once you observe the uh, detailing now simple simply supported condition they are not perfect so to resist the moments due to partial fixity you can consider this uh, 
uh, if time permits you can give this otherwise is may skip while doing it for the exam uh, negative moment reinforcement may be provided near the supporting edges so we are taking it as a partial partial fixity case at the uh, near the supports so the moment the radial moment at supporting edge of a partially fixed slab what is the radial moment if you observe the formulas it will be uh, seen as m is equal to minus 1 by 16 w r square which is the radial moment at supports of a partially fixed slab so minus 1 by 16 w r square so the maximum moment here in simply supported cases 3 by 16 w r square so this value is almost numerically 1 by third of the moment at center so the spacing required will be three times that of the spacing now given at the center the moment is almost reduced to one by third value so we can give the bars at a greater spacing that is three times the spacing so now we have chosen 180 mm spacing to be given at the center uh, what is the spacing three times mean three into 180 540 mm so the maximum spacing allowed is 300 mm so you cannot give this 540 mm so we are taking it as 300 mm hence provide right 10 mm dia bars at 300 mm center to center and uh, this is what this is the radial moment this is the radial moment we are talking about so you have to give this reinforcement the same diameter bar you can choose the same diameter bar and this reinforcement should be given uh, radially and for a distance of 420 mm from the support at the top of a negative moment if you observe the moment diagram you can uh, you can clearly understand this uh, so we have to give this 10 mm dia bars at 300 mm center center radially because we are talking about radial moment and it should be given radially for the distance 420 mm we, 1 by 6 from the width of, width of 1 by 6 Radio, 1 by 6 of radius from the support at the top for negative moment the rings at the bottom may be given at the top too if not it's okay well, we can give it as the uh, we give it on the top also so um, this is the detailing figure so uh, this is a plan of bottom reinforcement and this is a plan of top reinforcement at the top what how the reinforcement should be given and at the bottom how the reinforcement should be given and this is a cross-sectional view if you are observing a cross-section x6 this is a cross-sectional view so the 10 mm dia at 180 mm center to center this was designed for the central area so this can be given throughout as uh, throughout the slab in both directions in both directions you can go for 180 mm spacing in vertical as well as horizontal as the figure as this figure is considered this is the plan of bottom reinforcement and at the bottom you have to give four numbers of 10 mm dia rings for the circumferential moment at the supporting edge so we have designed uh, the at the we have designed the reinforcement at the center and also at the supporting edge and these four numbers of uh, bars these rings should be given near the supporting edge to take the circumferential moment and now about the top reinforcement we are giving 10 mm dia bars at 300 mm this reinforcement three times the diameter so 300 mm this is given radially clear so this radial moment in order to take this radial moment we are giving this radial reinforcement and it is given up to a uh, up to a distance or at a, within a distance of 420 mm from the support okay so 10 mm dia bars at 300 mm center to center along the periphery and we are repeating the same uh, bottom circumferential bars here also the four rings are repeated so this is a cross section okay so this uh, this uh, effective cover the cover is shown here that is why here we are not giving any reinforcement in this small gap it is a cover expressed here okay so uh, the details are the other details are marked over here you, you can understand clearly and the last step is check for shear check for shear uh, we have to see uh, what, what is the critical section the critical section for shear is at a distance d from the support 
so v is equal to w r by 2 this is the uh, general expression for all the three cases and what is the r value here so r is the how is the distance of that point considered from the center r is the distance uh, to the point from the center so where is the point considered at the critical section and the, at the critical section the point is at a distance d from the support so small letter r is equal to radius minus d so the r value is uh, 2.41 meter so what is v v is equal to 10.5 into 2.41 divided by 2 which is equal to 12.65 kilonewton and we have to find out what is tau v and we have to find out what is tau c tau v is the shear shear stress due to the shear force acting which is a shear force maximum shear force wr by 2 this is 12.65 so what is the shear stress due to this shear force 12.65 into 10 raised to 3 to convert it to newton and divided by b and d b is 1000 and d is 90 so you will get the value is 0.14 newton per mm square this is a shear force shear stress uh, now in our slab due to the shear force now what is the ast provided now we have to see what is tau c value what is the permissible shear stress with uh, the ast provided we are given some ast uh, general area of steel given so what how much shear stress can be uh, resisted by this ast provided so we have to see what is the ast provided area one bar divided by spacing given into 1000 so 5 by 4 into 10 square divided by spacing is 180 that we have given 180 into 1000 you got you will get 436 mm square this is the actual ast provided not the ast required you can find out the ast provided then uh, 100 ast by bd so why do we need to find this one why should we talk about ast and all because tau c is in table 19 page 73 of is 456 uh, and tau c is depending on 100 as by bd value so you have to find out okay so 100 as by bd is equal to 100 into asc provided 436 divided by 1000 into 90 so 0.484 percentage so you have to interpolate the value tau c value interpolate and uh, find out tau c value 100 as by bd values will be different so you have to find uh, for this value so you have to interpolate and the tau c value is 0.47 newton per mm square then observe the tau v point observe tau v is 0.14 and the permissible value is 0.47 so this tau v is less than tau c hence we need not give any additional reinforcement to take the shear the reinforcement that we have given is okay to take this shear force so there is no need for shear reinforcement when we have shown the detailing part also so that was about the design so now uh, we shall see some other problem uh, so in this question there is a slight difference a hall is circular with an internal diameter internal diameter is given and it is 6.50 meters so we have to design a simply supported slab for the hall and the life load is given as 3500 newton per meter square and the grade particulars are also given for concrete and steel so what is the difference with uh, with the previous problem it is here the internal diameter of the slab is uh, given and it is the we are it's talk it, it is being told about the hall not a slab so this is the clear span of the room internal diameter was given so the only difference major difference we have to consider is we have to consider the support condition supporting wall we have to assume the supporting wall let the thickness be 150 mm sorry the bearing how much is being bared so this is taken as 15 mm 150 mm so effective diameter will be support width is 150 so 6.5 plus 0.15 half the uh, width on half the width of support on two sides so 6.50 plus 0.15 by 2 plus 0.15 by 2 so effectively it is 0.15 6.5 plus 0.15 that is 6.65 meters so this is the diameter now what is the radius it is 
3.325 half of this and what is the effective depth required we are assuming the thickness as uh, radius divided by 20 1 by 20th of the radius which is equal to 167 and we have to proceed it so uh, 10 mm dia bars clean cover clear cover of 15 mm and all we have to proceed it so this is just an example you can do it as a uh, as that of the previous problem in the same way the major difference is here if it if the internal diameter is given you have to find out the effective radius you have to assume a support width and you have to add it to the internal diameter to find out the effective radius and you can proceed in the same manner and when you're drawing the figure you can see a slight difference here uh, showing the support conditions but uh, and also uh, in the material given you can see a formula like this to find out the IST required so this is a ready made equation you can uh, I had told you in class before like you can, you can memorize you can remember this equation and substitute and get the IST required or the PT value required in just one step so you can use the same equation as we have, uh, as we have told in the uh, previous slide point H on F by IST that's only difference and you can proceed the same manner so this example uh, the step for check for shear is not given you can do that also and you can refer this uh, detailing part so in this figure they have shown half of the slab they have shown the bottom plan and for half of the uh, figure they have shown the top plan you can also uh, show the detailing in this manner if you are running in short of time so this is the problem you can uh, understand it by yourself it's very clear so in this problem uh, it is about a circular slab with partial fixity at the support so here the difference is in the moment values so it is for we have to consider the partial fi partially fixed case and we have to take the circumferential and radial moment diagrams or the values as uh, for the partially fixed case so and uh, it is a it, it has to be proceeded in the same manner as we have done before and finding the ast and all and doing the detailing part so after finding the ast required uh, we have to uh, show the detail so in this problem uh, here the radial moment varies so in the previous slide you uh, you can observe the variation of radial moment so it is varying parabolically from minus 1 by 16 to 1 by 16 w r square at the center so the uh, bend the point where the bending moment is getting zero at the point of counter of flexure for this radial moment may be taken as a at a distance of root of 2 by 3 r from the center that means from the support it is uh, you have to detect that value so this value root of 2 by 3 r from center is 2510 mm from the center so from the support it is 565 mm so you have to give the radial bars for a radial length equal to the distance up to this point that is 565 mm so up to 565 mm you have to give the uh, radial reinforcement this value this radial reinforcement should be given up to 565 uh, mm from the uh, support so that is a difference here when uh, when the end condition is partially fixed and in this problem also we, uh, we haven't checked the shear you can do it uh, by your own and have a check on the shear also okay i hope it is clear now